Welcome back to Man the Helm. I am fresh back from the Woodshed Guitar Experience, and today I'm going to talk about some of the advice that I got from some of the players there. So if you guys don't know, my name is Jake. I'm a guitar player, but I also run a small podcast called Man the Helm. Link will be down below if you want to check out the podcast itself. But like I said in the intro, I am fresh back from Woodshed. I am sitting here trying to kind of decompress and reabsorb all the crazy, crazy information that I received from the Woodshed experience. But what exactly is the Woodshed guitar experience? Well, the Woodshed guitar experience is a... Imagine VIP on steroids. It's hosted by Andy Wood. If you guys don't know Andy Wood, phenomenal guitar player, all around great person, awesome hang, everything in between. Anyway, he hosts this every year. This is the fifth year it's been happening. It is located in Crossville, Tennessee at the beautiful Lake Francis Resort. Check out that picture. Past lineups have included gentlemen like Joe Bonamassa, Greg Koch, Eric freaking Johnson. When I say the best guitar players, they are the best guitar players on the planet. And this year was absolutely no different. The lineup this year was Andy Campbell playing drums. Jim Riley came. Daniel Kimbrough. He worked his butt off the entire time, not only providing the musical director duties, but playing rhythm with all of these phenomenal artists. It, it, unbelievable musician. If you don't know who he is, I'll have a link down below. You need to check him out. Along with our favorite uncle, Mr. Ben Eller, as well as Ryan Fluff, Bruce, Tom Quayle, Dave LaRue, Andy Timmons, Brent Mason, Ariel Posen, Jake freaking Workman, Andy Wood, and of course the phenomenal Steve Morris. Unbelievable experience, stacked lineup this year. It was phenomenal. Just a quick caveat. I'm not being paid to say any of this stuff. I paid to go to the woodshed. I didn't get any you know, special treatment or anything. I was just a camper there, and I want to share with you guys some of the experiences that I had at the woodshed. The first night embodied what the rest of the trip was going to be like. It was a bluegrass night. Jake Workman, he, seeing him online is one thing, but seeing that man burn it up on stage is something completely different. The accuracy, the groove, the just proficiency that man has on the instrument was unbelievable. My jaw was dropped for the entire probably hour set that they played. Just unbelievable playing. The rest of the week was kind of set up like that though. You had clinics during the day. Um, Ariel Posen was talking about slide and just basic musicianship and how nobody, like, he, he didn't say you shouldn't learn things on your instrument but it was more of about finding your voice. And that's kind of like the overarching theme. And it's like all of these gentlemen that were the artists that were there, they are unabashedly themselves. Like they're not trying to like note for note other people's licks. They, they take, you know, they're still standing on the shoulders of those giants. You know, they're taking influences in, but then kind of turning it into their own thing. And that was the overarching theme for all of these artists. You know what I mean? We're sitting here thinking about, oh, how can I do this? What piece of gear is going to make me sound better? What's going to do this? What's good? What, you know, the list can go on and on. All of these artists were talking about how they take what they love and pull it into what they do. For instance, Tom Quayle, you guys probably know him. If you do not know who Tom Quayle is, stop this video right now and go check out Tom's channel. Phenomenal teacher, legato out. Uh, his legato style is just unmatchable. It's, it's so crazy how fluid that legato is for him. 
But the same thing, he was talking about how he loved watching Jake Workman and Andy Wood and especially Steve Morris with their alternate picking stuff, but he has never been really good at it. What he is really good at is those silky smooth legato runs that he does. So what did he do? He leaned into that. He took what he was good at and fine tuned it. Now he did say he you know, played a lot trying to get that right hand, that alternate picking super great, and he could just never get it down. So the point of all this for Tom Quayle when he was talking to me, it's just like, dude, do what you do and lean into it. Be unabashedly yourself. Do not worry about what other people on the internet or in person have to say, or you should be doing this, or you should be doing that. Yes, there are key fundamentals that you should be doing as a guitar player. You should be getting to know your fretboard. You should be, you know, understanding how different chords and what you, what kind of lines you can play over those chords. But at the end of the day, to be a better guitar player that you need to hone alternate picking in, if that's what you want to do, that's awesome. If it's something that you've always really struggled with, I'm sure there is a technique that you don't struggle with as much that you can really lean into and refine. One of my favorite parts of the event was the first masterclass we had with the incredible Mr. Steve Morris. And he said something to us that cracked me up. And I didn't quite get it when he first said it. Made an analogy. He said, I can tell a lot about a guitar player and how good they are based off of how they sweep. And not this type of sweeping, but this type of sweeping. But the analogy was that what he was trying to say is he understands if someone is very diligent in what they do, something as remedial as sleep, sweeping a floor, that that is gonna transition over into the rest of what you do. So that's what he was talking about. And he was talking about you know, something as simple as if you're driving down the road, be the best driver you can be at that point in time. If you're cleaning up your house, clean it the best you possibly can. Anything you do in life, do it as best as you possibly can. And this is going to carry over into every other aspect of your life. When it comes to your plane, you will then Try to do the best that you possibly can. If you're doing some stuff for social media and you're doing a bunch of takes, nail it. Don't be satisfied with just the, 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 oh, okay, I think I did kind of okay on that one. No, nail it. Now that's not to say I post a lot of things where I fail. I think that's real important too, to show that, you know, we just don't learn these things. You know, most of these people that you're, we were talking about, these, these icons in, you know, the overall guitar space, they weren't always good. They were always just like me and you. Whenever we started, we didn't pick up our instrument, regardless of what it is, and just be a prodigy. Those are out there, but they're very few and far between. So I really loved that masterclass. One of the other great pieces of advice I got, because my right hand always sucks. I can't alternate pick very well. It's okay, but it's, it's, it's always kind of lacked and I couldn't get enough speed to really get it going. I'm going to do a full video on this, but I'm just going to break it down real quick. Sitting in a clinic with Jake Workman. He said, put your arm out like this. Have your, you know, your forearm straight and your wrist just kind of hanging there. You're just holding up the weight and do one of these. Just move your wrist back and forth. Now, if you want to do the same thing, with your pick. Have your pick in your hand, forearm flat, and this is the motion right here. This is how you want to feel. Quite a wide range of motion that happens here. Probably about, I don't know, six to seven maybe inches that you have when you do this. Now what he broke this down to, like if I were to strum, Now the next thing that happened after this though, what he was talking about was if you want to go from that wide semicircle, flatten your wrist out and do the same motion. Well that wide semicircle just went down in the amount of length that you have between this. So now instead of doing, you know, your wrist kind of hanging at an angle like this, now we're kind of up like this. So instead of going those super wide Flatten out the wrist. So
So I have not refined <laughs> that technique very well yet. I've only been back for a day. One of the biggest things too was a um, Levi Clay. I forgot to mention him earlier, but he was there as well. He did a quick little clinic with Andy. It was phenomenal, talking all about transcribing. And one of the biggest things that they were talking about were two things, using your ears, listening to the song, not having it just spoon fed right to you. Don't go on the tab, don't go you know, to YouTube and, and just get it note for note, but listen to it. You know, work it out, get it under your fingers while you're listening as you're playing, trying to figure these things out. And one of the things they were talking about was, you know, with, with the transcribing, how to kind of like start to hear these things. It's a, repeti it's a repetitive process. It's something that just doesn't happen overnight. You know, you have to do it. And, and a lot of these things that these gentlemen were talking about in the artist lineup, that, that's the common theme too, is you gotta constantly hone it. But another good piece of advice that Levi and Andy gave was playing things that necessarily aren't guitar related, playing vocal melodies, playing more like cinematic music. I'm sure if you guys know, I'll have a link down below to this because this one's awesome. Andy Wood's cover of Rooster, where he breaks down the vocal melodies and he kind of talked about how it took him a minute to kind of rearrange on guitar how that was going to work. Not like the actual composition of the song, but how he was going to play it. You know, especially with the different vocal lines between Lane and Jerry. But overall, great couple days, unbelievable experience. If you guys can, I would highly recommend that you try to get to the woodshed at some point in time. I'm already making plans to be there next year. Moving some stuff around, making sure I got the funds for it. It, it was an unbelievable experience. And I would highly recommend that you check out the woodshed for 2025. Like I said, I'm not being paid for this. Nobody, uh, nobody's talking to me about this. I genuinely learned so much that I'm going to try to relay in some videos here coming up. But I, I had to make something expressing how awesome it really was. So that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll check you on the next one.